Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I'm in uh, beautiful Atenas in the Central Valley of Costa Rica. And we're at this uh, beautiful property, beautiful sunny day here in, uh, in Costa Rica. And I'm fortunate enough to be here with Andrew Partain. Now, Andrew is a uh, US citizen, been living in Costa Rica for many, many years, and he's a real estate agent here in Atenas. Um, so Andrew, thank you so much for joining us for this conversation where we wanna share uh, with our viewers a little bit about life here in Atenas. Roger, thanks so much for the opportunity uh, to showcase Atenas, and I hope I can be of, of help with understanding day-to-day uh, -day life here in our little town. Yeah, I think that's gonna be great, Andrew, because Atenas has really gotten to the spotlight over, I would say, the last uh, 10 years. It's really growing. A lot of people are asking about living in Atenas, uh, the whole Atenas lifestyle. What do you think is the appeal of, uh, of that's attracting all these people to attain us? Well, Roger, I think the combination of a lot of factors, um, for one, it's still a towny feel. Uh, it's small, 30,000 people, but you have all the amenities within a half hour, the big box stores, the hospitals. Town itself has so many restaurants, so many services, so many amenities that cater to the expat. Uh, you don't have to live in the city, uh, but you have it there. If you want to go to the beach, you can go for the day, you can go for a weekend. So logistics wise, it's also very centrally located. And, um, you know, I would say it's just a nice place to live. Yeah. Well, certainly this lifestyle where we are at this property is a clear indication of, of, a, great, of a great lifestyle. Maybe if we touch a little bit, Andrew, about you know, your, your, your background a little bit. I mean, I mentioned you were a U.S. citizen. How did you end up in Atenas and what, how many years have you been here? What's your life been like? in this transition over to uh, Atenas? Well, to give you a little bit of background, um, I actually grew up uh, in Ecuador, so spent, uh, spent a good amount of, of years in uh, South America, and then ventured and, and lived in Florida, lived in California. Uh, my parents actually moved out here almost 30 years ago, so I would always visit. Um, really had the desire to move here at some point, and finally had that chance in 2009. Um, I would say a tennis in specific, um, you know, my folks, they started out in uh, Escazú, uh, Santa Ana, your, your neck of the my, woods. My neck of the woods, Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but 30 years ago, it was different. Yes. Uh, yeah. Now it's, it's a lot more cosmopolitan. Uh, it's great you have all the amenities there, you have all the restaurants, et cetera. But they really wanted the small town feel, uh, know your neighbors, see the same folks every day. And uh, really, they just kind of fell in love with this little town. Um, well, yeah, I'm glad you pointed that out because that's exactly what, uh, what you know, like you mentioned. I mean, we started out in Nescazú 35 years ago. And uh, 30 years ago or so, I think uh, Nescazú was probably what Atenas feels like now. Small town, little rural, outside of San Jose. And now that same appeal of, of what Nescazú was 30 years ago, you get it now here. Uh, in Atenas. I, I totally agree. And I think we'll preserve that towny feel. Uh, as you can see in our background, um, it, there's, there's room to grow, but I don't think we'll have the high density, high city uh, feel to this little town. Uh, I think it'll remain a little gem that, uh, that people could experience and hopefully uh, live and move here someday. Yeah, I think. I think you're right because I think what's, what's, uh, what kind of limits that growth here, uh, and it's a positive way for those who get in, is that you are, it's, I mean, you got very hilly and you're, you're bordered by mountains. So there's not that much uh, developable land in order to be able to build like big urbanizations or big developments like they did in some of the other areas of, uh, of San Jose. Exactly. Just by default, it's hard to grow in certain areas. And as you know well, there's also zoning. Yeah. So we really yeah. do limit uh, high density. Uh, what is nice about some of the communities, uh, like the one we're sitting in, is really the elbow room. Uh, right now we're sitting on an acre and three quarters, so you do have that space between your neighbors. Uh, you still have uh, a neighborhood feel, yep. but you're not uh, lot line to lot line uh, like the high density parts of the city. And uh, folks, stay, stay tuned to the end of the video because Andrew is going to give us a tour of this beautiful property as well. So. Right now, we're going to focus on uh, life in Atenas. And the next question I have about Atenas is uh, medical care. You know, we all, expats, start getting a certain age, and uh, we want to have access to medical care. 
One of the things that I find attractive about Atenas is, you know, I drove here from San Jose and it took me, you know, 35 minutes without traffic. <laughs> um, and so that's a big appeal because all the, all the major hospitals are pretty close. What do you have here in Atenas locally uh, for medical care and what's your, you know, if you talk a little bit about that. Now, that's a good question, Roger. Um, first, I'd like to point out there's a lot of really great bilingual dentists and doctors right in town. Uh, you don't need to venture outside of town to find, uh, you know, general practitioners, uh, general dental work. Uh, but I would have to say we have the benefit of having an ambulatory center called Linea Vital. Now, uh, you can be part of their network or you don't have to be. Uh, I've used it for general things like a flu shot uh, or unfortunately I had a client that uh, tripped in the shower, broke his arm. Oop. I jumped on the phone, I called them and they were there within five minutes, kept them stable, took them to SEMA, one of the better hospitals within a short drive and he said his experience was just as good if not better with, uh, with his medical uh, service in Houston, Texas. Very, very interesting. So, again, what's the name of that service? It's uh, Linea Vital. Linea Vital. Okay, so it's like private... Uh, it's, it's private, and um, you could also... Uh, private, bilingual, most importantly, and you can be part of their network. It's kind of a discount network. Yeah. So, uh, this these doctors can be your general uh, practitioner, or in the case of the unfortunate case of my client, you can actually use them for emergency situations. Now we also have the CAHA, which is the government medical system. Right. Uh, I myself, I, I do use the CAHA uh, more for uh, medications, monthly medications. They do have dentistry as well. Uh, I do have uh, periodic checkups there, uh, what they call control, just to make sure you're doing okay. And uh, so you have a lot of different options. But most importantly, you do have some of the best hospitals in the Central Valley within a 20, 30 minute drive from Atenas. Yep, I think that's a, that's, that's a great point. And you, you are a, uh, a permanent resident in Costa Rica, so you, by, by, by law you have to maintain the, uh, the CAHA insurance. And so most of you that are moving to Costa Rica and you apply for residency, you're gonna have to get the, 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 the CAHA. And here in Atenas they have a, a clinic. Um, and so they provide all the basic services that you're gonna need if you wanna go through that public health care system as well, as a matter of That's correct, that's correct. That's correct. Um, and, Andrew, one, one more question that we uh, that a lot of our viewers always have when they're moving to a different country, or Costa Rica, of course, is, Roger, what is it going to cost me to live in this in this country? You know, what is the typical cost of living here in Atenas? You've lived here for many years, so I imagine this is something you you've got down pat. You've got a family, right? Sure, sure, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no, I think we can delve a little bit more into. Um, the makeup of housing costs here, maybe rental costs. Just very quickly, I would say, if we were to compare to some place like Florida, which I know, on the average, Florida is a little bit more expensive than the median cost for uh, for a home nationally in the states. Uh, the same goes for rent. Uh, here, it's it's a little bit cheaper. Uh, if the average cost for a home is four hundred thousand in Florida, we're actually more closer to three fifty. Okay. Now, I would say a little more on uh, the day-to-day -day aspects of living. Uh, we have a lot of Canadians. In uh -huh. fact, the French Canadians founded uh, what is development in Atenas. Interesting point, yeah. And I had a conversation well, just this morning, and somebody said that gas is actually more expensive in Canada wow. than in Costa Rica. Now, if you compare to different states in the U.S., we probably could be more expensive. Yeah. But if you go through the whole gamut, health care, food, uh, Granted, it depends how, how your lifestyle is. If you yeah. go out to eat all the time, it'll get expensive. But even going out to eat at the local restaurants is a lot more reasonable than going out to, to eat in the States. Uh, yeah. And of course, it may depend if you're coming from California or if you're coming from other states. That's a good point. Yeah, they absolutely. may deem it a lot more expensive or a lot cheaper. Yeah. But on the whole, I would say day-to-day uh, -day life is a little bit less expensive here. Mm -hmm especially when you get your real estate tax bill. Yeah. Um, it's sig significantly less expensive yeah, that's, there. That's, that's the biggest shocker I think people, people have, at least my, my, my sense when I, I tell people the property taxes, they go, per month? They go, no, per year. I, I agree. <laughs> right? Exactly. So exactly. what's your typical property tax here? In well, Atlanta? let's take a, a real easy round number. A $400,000 home okay. will, be, uh, will be assessed $1,000 a year in municipal taxes. Yeah. 
So uh, that's the biggest bulk of annual property taxes. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, mean, I know this for a fact because uh, we just dealt with a house there in Florida, and the Florida house that sold for three seventy-five, the property taxes were around six thousand dollars. So that's yeah. where you start to see the savings yeah. uh, when you look at annual savings. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, Andrew, you're you're a bit younger than than I am, and I think you've, you mentioned you had a you had a family, right? And you have a. That's correct. Yeah. And so, for example, in Atenas, what is the possibilities of school? I know there's an English school. Um, you want to talk a little bit about that for younger uh, people who want to come here with their families, what options they have? Sure. What's your experience? No, of course. Um, I'd probably start with saying that the public school system here is actually very good. Good to hear. Uh, now, where I think uh, the benefit of expats showing up with uh, their children at this town is the private schools do offer more extracurricular activities. Um, I think there's a little bit more sense of being college geared. Okay. Uh, but there are a lot of options. The, the most popular school here in Atenas uh, would actually be Green Valley. And that's just located five minutes from town center, K through 12. And uh, there's also a few more private schools. Leon is a smaller school. Uh, they're starting the higher grades pretty soon. Mm -hmm. um, now, there are other schools within a 20, 30 minute distance. You've got probably the most uh, premier school, Country Day. They right. moved uh, 20 minutes away to uh, San Rafael, adjacent La Guasima. Right. Yeah. And uh, there's also a Spaniard school, GSD. Uh, very interesting curriculum. In fact, with GSD, part of the curriculum is to have to take Mandarin. Interesting. So okay. uh, I would say a lot of parents have, have different options, actually. Great. So, so a lot of options for families for education in the, uh, in the Atenas area. What is, the, what is the cost of this uh, a typical private school? More or less? So I don't, I don't want to shy away from this. It is costly. Yeah. Um, I've been told that it could range anywhere from $500 a month to $1,000. Yeah. That sounds so like, that it can get right. pretty pricey, especially with the elite schools. Yeah. But I think, uh, I think parents can probably find the right combination with right. the right pricing. Right. Okay. Um, Andrew, uh, you know, we're here in, uh, in Atenas, and uh, it's been raining a lot. We're in the rainy season. This is the month of October. It's the rainiest uh, month of the year. But look at today. Clear skies. Sun nice shines skies. out. Yes. Um, Why is Atenas known as the best climate in the world? Well, let's start with, uh, let's start with the fact that we are in rainy season. Uh, I personally enjoy rainy season. Yeah. Now, October can be the most rainy, and you might be uh, kind of tired of it by the end of the month, but I prefer the rainy season. It's cooler, and yeah. it's, it's green. So uh, the nice thing about a tennis is we go from the, the coolness of the rainy season straight into what they call the, uh, the Christmas ones that come in from right. San Jose. Uh, sometimes mm -hmm. they could start in December and probably run all the way through March. Mm -hmm. And it's just right. the cool, nice breezes that kick in uh, from the east. Um, now, back to the perfect weather. Uh, I would say a spot like where we are right now tends to always have some type of a breeze. Yeah. And granted, we're only six minutes from town center. Yeah. Um, we have so many different microclimates. I think you can find the right uh, setting that you'd like to be in. Yeah. Uh, most of the residents, for example, in this community, Lomas del Paraíso, most of the residents actually do not have uh, air conditioning. Okay. Uh, for the most part, uh, just having fans running uh, should do well enough. For those that are heat sensitive, you can get the split unit ACs. Yep. Uh, not too uh, expensive to install and not uh, too expensive to run. Maybe those hot hours during the, uh, the hotter months of the yeah. year. Well, that, that's, uh, that brings me to another point, which I think we skipped over, was a house, uh, a typical house, the monthly utilities in, in, in Atenas. What, 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 is, what is here a typical bill per that, month? That's a good question. Um, if you take all the services, uh, pool, have somebody do your, your pool maintenance, have somebody do your yard work, uh, electric, cable, water, and HOA, I've seen the average, including this house, the average tends to be around $500 or less. Okay, pretty, pretty reasonable for all the services you're it, getting. Exactly. Now, if you don't live in an, a, an HOA established community, if you want to clean your own pool, if you want to do your own yard, obviously you'll save more money. Yeah. 
But I think that's pretty reasonable. Five hundred dollars for all the services, all the uh, utilities included. All the utilities included is is more than reasonable. Very reasonable. Okay, Andrew, we're going to get ready to tour this beautiful property here uh, to get an idea of you know costs, rentals, and things like that. More or less, well, I think you mentioned this before. Your the average cost of a house in Atenas, if you had to take it from the low to the high end, what's your average that you're selling? in your office these days and what are the average rentals as well just to sure. kind of give our audience an idea of what to expect no good question roger um if we took the whole scheme of things uh from small homes 100 150 thousand dollars all the way to a million uh i've seen that the the mean tends to run asking 400 sell price 350 but that takes the entire scope of the market now if you really center into more uh, the expat uh, acre and three quarters, let's say, pool, nice views. Uh, you do have a little bit more of what we call maybe a luxury market, which would be 500000 okay. Interesting. Just to give you an idea. Okay. And then the rentals? Um, you know, again, I think it goes back to what you really need. Um, I used to say $1,500 for a gated community, three bedroom, two bath and a pool, some views. Uh, I think the Airbnb market has put some pressure on six-month, one-year-plus rentals. Yeah. So that fifteen hundred, uh, that might be pushing up to two thousand plus. Okay. Granted, if you can do away with maybe uh, a private pool and maybe go for a shared pool, if you're okay with two rooms, uh, smaller space, I've seen rentals go from five hundred to a thousand, depending on what you really need. That's a really good point you make because I know we've handled some closings and some of the people that have we've handled the closings for where you, you've been the agent selling, a lot of those people were buying just for investment and then you know they would go back to the States and they just Airbnb the property and some of them were making some astonishing returns. You know, I, uh, we've both had, we've had one client that we worked on together. He specifically bought the house to have a, a well-run Airbnb. Uh, did a really, really good job and um, not only did it pay his mortgage, he always had money left over every month to kind of save up for his Costa Rica piggy bank. So I would say, um, I would say Airbnbs do have the capacity to at least pay the holding cost mm -hmm. and to have a budget for uh, upgrades, mm -hmm. um, unforeseen expenses. But it is a viable, it is, it is a viable income stream. Yeah, like, like you mentioned, the plus is for the, for the person buying it that they're getting a good viable income stream. The negative is for those of you coming down that want, you know, one, a one year rental, it's becoming tougher as you, as you clearly mentioned. Yeah. I think we touched upon, uh, people doing their research. I, I see one of two things, either people have done their research, they've already done a few trips, mm -hmm. but now they're set on the idea of living here. Uh, they go straight into the purchase process and buy their primary home or for example, a vacation rental. Yeah. Or they may not need a year to decide. Uh, actually, I've seen people on the average may take four, five, six months to say, okay, I confirm I like living here today to day. I know, how, uh, I know how things work here. I'm ready to pull the trigger and invest in a tennis. Andrew, where are we? <laughs> so we're located in the private community of Lomas del Paraíso. Uh, the nice thing about this community is we're very close to town. Six minutes from town center, it's a smaller community, so very private. Uh, I'd like to showcase this home. It's listed at 699,000. The main home is a little over 2,200 square feet. All right, let's do it. Nice, large kitchen for those that like to cook. Cathedral ceilings, all cathedral ceilings, plenty of light. And there's an added guest home, a 600, uh, square foot guest home as well. Nice large common area. Master bedroom. Small nice, walks closet. out right through, right side, walks right out to the pool. Nice. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, very spacious living room. Look at the views out of the living room, which is spectacular. And so here's, I, can bring the, I can bring the relatives here, Andrew. And exactly. Hang, hang out the, here. Uh, the mother-in-law suite. <laughs> Not exactly a punishment, right? Look <laughs> no. At, look at the view. Look at the nice views. Wow. Your own private patio. 
It has its own small kitchen, little living area. And a one bedroom suite. Have a gazebo off to the left. Plenty of covered patio. And nice views of the area mountains. Okay, how about some questions about this particular house? Sure. So what what do the property taxes on this particular house? So at asking six six hundred ninety nine thousand, we're looking at one thousand seven hundred and fifty. Obviously, if we can bring the price down, your taxes will go down uh, re respectively. So, seventeen fifty per year for property taxes for this. That's house. correct. Okay. Utilities in this house? Sure. Utilities they tend to run about one fifty. Again, they're not using AC. That might go up another hundred dollars a month if you run the AC maybe part of the day. Okay. Uh, you've got eighty dollars for maintenance on the pool, okay. and another one fifty on the yard. Okay. There's a good amount of yard to take care of. All right. So very reasonable. But you're still under the $500 threshold. Yeah. And so I noticed that this is a development, right? So it's a development called a... Lomas del Paraíso. So this is a whole development called Lomas del Paraíso. Yes. Uh, we're about two-thirds of the way down. Uh, but it is a small private community. Uh, they have a common gate at the entrance, which I think you took a shot of. Yeah. And, uh, but the nice thing is the distance from town. It's, it's actually walkable. Yeah, it was a very short distance from town. Now, how, how many houses are in this whole development? Uh, to be exact, I, I would probably say around 25 tops. So it's very, very exclusive. Very, very exclusive, very, very private. Exactly. And all, of, all the, the land uh, included with the properties are, you said, the size of this property was? It's an acre and three quarters. Uh, you know, in the tennis, we do live like billy goats, as you can, as you can see. Yeah. But uh, a lot of the land goes down into the ravine. And it shares borders with the other houses that meet at the same location yeah, at yeah. the bottom of the hill. Yeah. So, yeah. And that's part of the reason we were talking before was the fact that uh, construction in Atenas is limited because, guys, get a, get a sense of this. You're not going to be able to put huge developments it, into exactly. areas like this. You can't go wall to wall here. It's not going to happen. So that, that gives it more of a private feel. Okay. It really does. Right. Ciao. Ciao. Hasta luego, muchas gracias por todo. So stay tuned because we're now going to head out with Andrew to a different part of Atenas and we're going to take a look at a different house priced in the $395,000 range so you can get an idea of what's available in that price range as well. And of course, I'll leave Andrew's uh, contact information in the video so you can reach out to him if you have any questions about Atenas. For those of you that are new to the channel, welcome. My name is Roger Peterson. Glad you could join us on this visit to Atenas. Atenas is a town which is located about 45 minutes from the capital of San Jose and about 30 minutes to the international airport. Here we are driving through the center of the town of Atenas and we're heading over to see the second property that Andrew Partain will show us for this video. So now, now we're at a house with a different price point. What's the, what's the price of this house? So now we're looking at a home, a brand new, by the way, at $395,000. Uh, just to give you a different kind of uh, price point, a uh, brand new community called Las Lomas, also about five minutes from town, very centrally located. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Nice big covered deck area. Nice front lawn. And this property is actually a little bit over an acre. You may ask Andrew, where is that acre? You have a second level with an internal road down below where you could actually build another house of the same size. Oh, really? Okay. And it extends all the way to this tall primary forest. Okay. So you have the tall, mature trees next to you. And as you can see, nice views in the background. Yes. And I wanted to show you a brand new home. Views are over here. And this is a, yes, this is a brand new home. Exactly. Uh, Just getting uh, finished. Yeah. So we'll be looking at three bedrooms, three baths, a little bit over 2,400 square feet under roof. Now remember we count the uh, outside covered terrace, the parking area, so maybe closer to a little bit, uh, maybe 1,800 square feet within walls. That would be the master? And this would be the ma uh, master bathroom suite with direct access to the pool as well. And the utilities would be very similar to the last place. Maybe a little bit more for yard, considering you have a lot more yard down below. Last we discussed was eligible for financing, right? Because Costa Rica, there's not a lot of financing in Costa Rica. So like, 
do the sellers finance or what, what talk about the finance? That's actually a great question specifically with this property. This is a developer build. They would be willing to finance with 50% down. Okay. They'd like to keep it within a short amount of years uh, at 8%. Okay. Um, now, we, they, we, there are examples of other homes where you might be able to put down as low as 25, 30% down. Okay. But this one specifically, he would want half down. So you kind of play this uh, depending on the sellers, right? Because exactly. The banks, in order to get financing in Costa Rica with a pro bank, you're going to have to have residency first in Costa Rica. So a lot of people that come down and don't have residency, you're going to have to look for maybe uh, seller financing and deals like this or pay cash. Exactly. Case by case basis. Case by case. Correct. Thanks. Okay, so Andrew, this house, $395,000. Uh, let us go over the, the, the living costs. Sure. The cost of taxes, utilities for a house like this size. No problem. Uh, so a house at asking price at 395000 would actually be just under $1,000. Um, you would have uh, similar expenses to the last house, maybe about $150 a month in uh, utilities. Again, if you use AC, that might go up a little bit. Uh, pool service is usually under $100. Now, the caveat with this home is you do have this nice piece of uh, front yard here. There's a whole other larger yard down below. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if a gardener would probably be charging at least $150 maybe a little bit more considering the, the amount of land. Okay. Well, Andrew, it's been great. Uh, I appreciate so much the opportunity to be able to talk to you, all your experience uh, here and showing us the tour of in Atenas. My pleasure. And uh, everybody out there, uh, in the description, I'm going to leave a uh, contact information for Andrew Partain. If you want to get a hold of somebody in Atenas that lives here, has raised his family here, works here, and knows the real estate market in Atenas, Andrew Partain is definitely your, your person it would be my pleasure to assist thank you so much thank you for visiting. visiting all right thanks That's again Bye. thank you for joining us during this tour of Atenas and if you have any questions or comments let me know in the comments section and see you soon on the next video